Mike was asking what's going on with the motor. So it's running hot at, yeah, hot. at high RPM. So at normal, so at lower RPMs, fine, right. no, no big issue. So it's running about 10 degrees high, which is not good. Not good. Well, so this is something you see all the time, like you have to clean out. Right. So I take care of a 38 foot sport fish because you weren't there that long, but you were there three, 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 three and a half weeks. And this is, we're not in the middle of something now. If it was like the heart of summer, I would have said, no, definitely. That's what happened yeah, because, yeah. because the summer growth is just phenomenal. So it's the warmer the water. Warmer yeah. the water. Yeah. And it's sunlight too. Oh, so they have sunlight. Like the sunlight. sunlight. Yeah. It's just, I mean, everything warm. I mean, that was Mike's thought too. Like barnacles. I think you got barnacles. I got barnacled. <laughs> Get down to my hole. <laughs> All right, we're trying to diagnose this. I don't want to call it an overheating issue, but it's an overheating issue. When we've got the engine throttled up, the temperature's climbing too high. It's something that's only going to get worse with time, for whatever reason, and you do not want to overheat your engine. It's bad for the gaskets, bad for all the internals. So we're trying to figure out why is this engine getting hot. First place to look is the raw water impeller. This is the part of the pump that sucks the seawater up into the engine to the heat exchanger. And it's the heat exchanger that's cooling down the engine with the fresh water system. So took out the old raw water impeller. I don't know if you can see close. I'd be looking for any missing veins. These are called veins. We've got an impeller that's intact. I don't see any creasing and I don't see any cracking. So this impeller is just fine. I'm gonna replace it anyway because that's what we do on an annual basis here. Uh, but at least so far, the system looks fine. All right, we got uh, water coming out. Raw water impeller is replaced. Next year, next thing to do is uh, try the barnacle buster on the heat exchanger and see see what comes out. Hey man, it's our savior. I know. How are you? Seriously. Video or no? Video. Sorry to hear about the overheat. Patrick Leclerc showing up like the superhero that he is. <laughs> Let us borrow your truck, by the way. The I other know, day. It's my pleasure. And now, with our little overheating issue, one of the first people to respond on the old social media. Oh, yeah. Hey, oh, overheating issue. I know something about that. <laughs> no, I think you Just a little bit. He texted us at seven in the morning. <laughs> I saw the post, I immediately responded. This is so it's, it's, it's what we do, and uh, we were so lonely. It's a simple uh, solution, the way we do it, so you don't have to tear anything apart, you know, so it takes, oh. uh, saves you a lot of time and money, basically. Cool, cool. Track ecological, and it's not just barnacle buster, you guys do a whole bunch of other stuff. Yeah, we got SuClean, that's for uh, a head system to keep the toilets clean. We have a tea gel that's a uh, air freshener, uh, basically that's tea tree oil based, that actually kills mold and bacteria throughout the boat. Uh, we have stuff for your drinking water system too as well. So yeah, we cover a lot of different products. Yeah, I should have brought you something. Did I you? Like I love that smell. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Junior. Oh, okay. So this is pretty cool. Basically, instead of having to call an AC mechanic or uh, a, a diesel mechanic, you can actually flush your own engine's air conditioning or generator. It's basically a built-in submersible pump. It allows you to connect the supply side and the return side of your units and ba of your system and basically flush them. Here. So the engine's not running? Nope. No, you have to take the impeller out to make sure that it flows through it. So yeah, so you basically have your supply here that's gonna push through your intake of your system. Then you connect the return line back over here and you just create a loop and basically flush it in circle like that. Okay, so this is gonna be the line that comes off the sail drive leg. Yep. Now, I am not familiar with these types of engines. So I actually have to see it to see exactly where you need to connect. I'm used to the, the big, big ones. Yeah, big diesels. All right, so Patrick is gonna do his best to dumb this down because you have to <laughs> with me. So when you're trying to clean something on a boat, you can use detergents or you can use basically acids. But the acids are, acids are tricky. 
you don't want to get some acids on like stainless steel or something like that. So when it comes to uh, cleaning out like growth, biological growth or deposits like on your head or in your freshwater cooling system on your Yanmar engines, it's not so simple as just mixing up some acids or some detergents, is it? Give me, give me the basics. What's the challenge here? Well, you know, with uh, when you're dealing with the seawater cooling systems, um, you're, you know, the, the, the basically what happens is the seawater, your engines are, heats up, the seawater stays in there and slowly evaporates. And when the seawater evaporates, you have all these little layers of calcium that just keeps building up and building up and building up. Now, you also have marine growth, and, you know, with the marine growth, acids are great, but you need to have penetrating agents and corrosion inhibitors to make sure you're not damaging your system. That's what our barnacle buster does. We have a penetrating agent that goes after the uh, biological laser that's the first thing that gets laid down over the barnacles muscles and all that kind of stuff then once we're through the biological layer we're able to attack uh, the calcium with the acids that we have in our product which is a food grade phosphoric acid same thing you'd have in coca-cola pepsi so it's really not that dangerous of an acid and then we also of course have corrosion inhibitors that prevent you from attacking the metals because you know in the marine industry you're dealing with with uh, aluminum uh, cop cooper nickel brass all those kind of things you want to make sure that you don't attack any of those things so that's the important part you know you you can some people will go to Home Depot and buy some hydrochloric acid or muriatic acid but you're really taking a lot of risk of damaging your system and destroying your system when you do that so you have to be very careful and a lot of uh, companies now are also voiding your warranty if they found out that you've used a, uh, a pure acid basically in your system that's not uh, corrosion inhibited or anything like that so you have to be very careful like the medic uh, I think it was in 2016 or 17 issued a, a uh, a warning to all their dealers that basically if they do a flush and they do not include or, or use a uh, corrosion inhibited product they would basically void their customers warranty so it's very important to to be careful what you use um, it's getting more and more watched by the companies basically because they're seeing a lot of corrosion in their system and that's a telltale sign that someone's using something they're not supposed to interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. so you said you've got some experience with the uh the hot engines in this part of the world. Yep. We were clean when we got here a month ago. I think we were clean in terms of growth inside the um, raw water intake right. and all that. So one month later, what do you think the chances are that we've got barnacles or oysters in that intake? I you might have some in the intake, but you know, normally what happens is that with an engine, when you shut it down, there's no flow going through. So for marine growth to grow in the system, you have to have flow. The air conditioning system, that's, you know, if you're flushing, if your AC is running 24 seven, you're definitely gonna have barnacles throughout the entire system, except on the discharge side of the coils, because the coils basically heat up get the water temperature so hot that on the discharge side, you won't have any buildup there. But on your main engines, because they're not running, the most thing that you'll most common thing you'll find is actually calcium buildup not exactly marine growth now you will have some on your intake line and things like that but when you get closer to you know the, the where the raw water pump is and the heat exchanger you won't have any of that kind of buildup in there in most cases anyways so we got about 800 hours on these heat exchangers which i bought new when we got this boat your bet calcium yeah, heat exchanger calcium for sure. yeah. one more time What's that? Oh yeah, I would say calcium for sure. Yeah, and calcium. how do you get that off? Well, you know, there's a couple of ways. Um, you can do it with a flushing system like we have called a Porter Flush Junior, where you would connect to the supply side of your main engine and the return side, and you basically create a loop where you basically flush it in a loop like this. Uh, now with that, you have to remove the impeller because you want to make sure that you're going to go flow through the impeller. You know, when it's in the, the impeller casing collapses and basically creates a uh, it basically doesn't allow you to flow through it. So you have to remove it so you make it make sure that you flow through the entire system. Cool, man. How often should uh, we be doing this? It depends where you are. In Florida, probably, you know, once a year, one, every year and a half or so. Uh, quick way to tell is, you know, take your boat out in the ocean, floor it. If you see, like, overheating, you're, you're, you're going to know right away that you have an issue. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize... <laughs> 
Wait, wait, wait. Should, should, you, should you head towards Panama <laughs> and fire wallet? <laughs> should you tell? But, right. Might be in some articles written, you know, where, where people recommend to, before you go anywhere, basically, to go try out and, and floor your engine because it's not something you do that often, but when you need it, it's extremely important and if you don't you know if you if you go to do that and your engine starts overheating and you're in rough water and you really need it you're basically screwed so it's a it's really important to, in my opinion to maintain your your seawater system yeah we're the test subjects <laughs> we're the dummies <laughs> we're the crash test dummies of the sailing world <laughs> but no that really is it patrick because we're like you know we don't motor that much right and when we motor we motor it Kind of above idle speed, and I'll clear it every once in a while just okay. to make sure the carbon's not building yeah, it's, up. It's, if you're running an idle too long, it's not going to be. Yeah, I mean we're above yeah. idle, but we don't firewall it. But then looking at that forecast about trying to get down to Great Anagua, like we would be pounding at with both engines for probably two and a half full days oh, wow. to get down there. So that's when I spooled them up, and that's when I saw the starboard getting. How bad was the overheat? About 190, one, you know, so that isn't hot enough to damage your head gasket. But it's not good, it's not good for the engine. No. So it's an indication that something is developing and it's not gonna get better. Not by itself at right. least. So what's, it's called the Porta, Porta, Porta Flush. The Porta Flush. So we're gonna go outside True. and Patrick's gonna, we're not gonna make you stay and watch us do this, yeah. but uh, show us how to hook it up Looks like a compact little unit, and uh, let's flush these babies. You're gonna do both engines, I think. Yeah, I was just yeah don't that. not, not yeah, take any chances. Should. I would. If you have it on one side, you know it, it might not be overheating heating now, but it will yeah. at Eventually. some point very shortly. Yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, I, you might run one engine more than the other, or what do you? you try and keep them even. Yeah. But like you say, it's not like we we don't hammer these engines. All right. I mean, we're. Super but we've never been in Fort Lauderdale for a month. So. It's true. Well, right, we were in the Bahamas. It's not, you know, if you're in land here, it, it's not too, too bad. If you were in Palm Beach, like you were at the Cracker Boy Marina, the growth there is just tremendous. I've wow. had. I've had uh, mega yachts that had sea strainer, you know, huge sea strainer, that basically had to be cleaned like almost on a two, three, four week basis because they get so filled up with growth. Oh, it's wow. really bad in the Stewart, uh, Palm Beach, West Palm Beach area. So yeah. why, why is that? Uh, there, from what I, I, I don't know if it's true, but what I've heard is the, the power plants in the area pump a lot of hot water through their heat exchanger, dump it out, so the water's actually more, uh, a lot warmer in that area. And, and so the growth reason. likes the warmth. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like places like Dubai, for example, we're like expanding there because there's so much marine growth that it's a huge issue there. Uh, yeah. Colombia, Brazil, Panama, a lot, a lot of growth there too as well. A lot of marine growth issues as well. Panama. Yeah, where you guys are heading. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we, were, we might be just going north. Oh yeah. What you do here is um, you want to disconnect your your suction side of your main in. Sea strainer. It looks like it will be the easiest location. So I take off the the hose that's feeding your sea strainer into your raw water pump, and that's going to be your supply side for the Porter Flush Junior. And then the exhaust elbow that's right here, um, coming off right the heat exchange, right off the heat exchanger is going to be your return line. So you're going to be going in that one, coming out, then you're just basically going to be creating a just creating a circulation loop that uh, should flush out all the uh, calcium out of there, and uh, with particle buster, obviously. Yeah. What do we dilute the barnacle buster to? It's a 4 to 1 dilution ratio, and I would say probably 2 hour, 4 hour flush at the most. Wow. Yeah, not wow. Much, much more than that. 2 to 4. So we're going to be able to see the uh, nastiness coming oh, yeah. out you'll of see, the you'll bucket. See, you'll see as a product when it first, because a good trick to make sure you have no leaks is to start with, start with fresh water. So you have fresh water in your five gallon, in your Porter Plus Junior, then you run it. If you see that the level stays level, well then you stay stable, then you know that you don't have any leaks, then you add your chemical afterwards. Because a lot of times when you connect to these, I mean, the, the, these are simple, yeah. uh, but when you have a more complicated system, you could have some other hose that's going somewhere and you just don't know about it, and then you end up with your pumping your particle buster overboard, you know, which is... <laughs> expensive. Expensive, exactly. Um, okay, let's say that we spill some of this particle buster. Yep. Um, obviously, we want to clean it up, but is there any part of the engine that it could hurt? 
Nope, it's not going to attach anything. Uh, I would be fewer to spill some in the bilge. I would just like, basically rinse it off with the hose and that's it. Okay, uh, cool. Try to you know drain it as much as possible, but it's not going to attack anything, anything like that. Go, cool, man. Two to four hours. Yep. When in doubt, go a little bit longer, I say. <laughs> right? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> should, we run it, should we run it overnight? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Oh, okay. So hopefully, one gallon. You're going to try and see. Once you disconnected your hose and you add the water to there, try to see how much water. Well, put basically like two gallons in here and then turn it on and see what you got. And if you don't get a return, just keep adding one gallon at a time. So you try to determine how much product, how much water you have in so there. So how much we have in there. Exactly. So if we, so if we got four, then, then you want one. But one you're probably going to be dealing with more like two gallons, three gallons maybe at the okay. moment, I would say. How high do we want this water to go? Uh, normally like right down below the, the return line so you can actually see it splash in there. I'm kind of... Uh... I'm kind of excited to do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a little gross, but it's a little bit like popping a zit. <laughs> like I just want this out. Satisfying. Satisfying, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. Or maybe more better analogy, like brushing my teeth. Yeah. That's more like it. Like like there you go. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, so man. Much. Oh, no worries, my friend. Yeah. Pleasure. Appreciate Glad it. Could help. Cool, cool. So, lucky. But, you know, so we think it's the calcium, but that's it's not just about the water flow. Right. What happens is basically the calcium uh, hinders the heat transfer. So they say that one sixty-fourth of an inch of calcium buildup on Cooper Nickel, our new heat exchanger, will re, uh, um, basically equivalent to about ten to fifteen percent efficiency loss on heat transfer itself. So it doesn't take a lot. Oh. Now you think of your heat exchanger and all the tubes that you have, and you have that buildup in there. That's a lot of accumulation that you have over the years. Mind blown again. <laughs> we had an audience today. <laughs> what does the gallery say? The gallery says, wow. <laughs> All right, so we're just hooking up our Porto Flush Junior. This is how we're going to administer the drug to the Yanmar engine. The drug being Barnacle Buster. An IV for the engine. It's not quite a drip system, it's a circulation system. So we're gonna figure out first of all how much water to put in here and that will inform us as to how much barnacle buster to put in here. And we let her rip for two to four hours. So we got our lines hooked up and we're gonna put in the barnacle buster. It's about a four to one ratio. And uh, then we're gonna let it soak for two to four hours. And we're expecting this water to turn a nasty, nasty color. So we got the GoPro set up. We'll document it. So we've got it uh, at about a four to one ratio. You can see the water is already turning a really nasty, nasty color. So we're gonna let this circulate for about two to four hours and we should be good. It's already looking really, really gross. Wow. All right, let's go check in on our experiment. Water's looking very, very green. It's two hours and 10 minutes in. Well, the uh, rains have arrived in South Florida. Just uh, today, the water, the thunderstorms have turned on and it's been pouring on and off today. Nick's out there finishing the flushing for the engine and still has to do the port side. I poured it out. All right, this is the port engine. Looks like it needed a little uh, pop treatment. A little barnacle busting. Wow. Yeah. All right, Nick is just doing a final flush, reverse flush on the barnacle buster. And the rain's just opened up on it. I should say on him. I feel so bad for him. I mean, I don't, I don't really see any change in the the actual amount of flow. Um, but I never really noticed that it had diminished either. Well, now that we've barnacle busted and checked the impellers, really the only thing that we can do is go test the engines out in real world conditions. And of course, this is what I should have done before we ever tried to leave for Panama. 
But this is one of those slowly building situations that creeps up on you. We've had the boat for five seasons now, and those heat exchangers were new when we bought the boat. But over time, you get those deposits, the mineral deposits in the heat exchanger, and that slowly degrades your cooling efficiency. And that, I believe, is what we were dealing with here with our overheating issue. Because once we were able to really get out there and push the engines hard, we did not get the overheating issue that, that we had seen divide. before. This was not initially a sponsored video, but the Barnacle Buster worked so well that we actually reached out to Track Ecological, uh, which is now owned by Drew Marine, and asked them if they would sponsor the main video, which they agreed to do. Uh, we can wholeheartedly stand behind this product. If you've got some overheating issues, you probably should give this a try before you really start disassembling the engine, because it could just very well solve your problem. 